All right, guys, today we're going to start with our first topic of the head and neck region, that is the orbital region. First of all, before going into the orbital region, one should know the definition about what an orbit is. When you will see in a skull model, when you guys will purchase a skull, you will see that in that skull, you will see these two hole-like structures, circle socket-like structures. These socket-like structures are called what are known as your orbit. And the region, this hole, is called as the orbital region. Now, what is present in this orbital region are your two orbits, your eyeballs, there will be the muscles present which will help in their contraction and relaxation, blood supply, their nerve supply. That all, whole thing makes what is called as the orbital region. Now the next is what is the shape of this orbital region. You will see when you will see on your anatomy netters atlases or different books, you will see that it is going from in to out in this direction forming this kind of shape. This kind of shape will resemble to you like the pyramid. So we can say that the orbital region is a pyramidal shape and the apex of it is in the posterior direction whereas its base is in the anterior direction. That was about the shape and the base and its apex. Now, the uh, margins of it. Now, this orbital region consists of your four margins which they have shown to you here. You have above the orbit, the superior orbital margin. Below the orbit, you have the inferior orbital margin. You have on the lateral side, the lateral margin. On the medial side, you have the medial margin. Now, the superior orbital margin, that is formed by your superior, uh, no, sorry. It has been formed by this bone. That bone is called as your frontal bone. Then you will see on the inferior surface, below that of the orbit, you have two bones, the zygomatic bone and the maxilla bone. These two bones are going to form the inferior margin of the orbital region. Now when you will look on its lateral side, you will see these two bones, that is the frontal and the zygomatic bone. The process of both the frontal and the zygomatic bone forms the lateral bone. Then we have the medial margin. When you will see on the medial side, you will see these two bones. Their process of the frontal and the maxilla form what is called as the medial region of the orbital region. Those were the four margins. Coming now to the walls. Walls of it. Walls, again, you will have a roof, a floor, a lateral wall, and a medial wall. The roof, you can see above it, you have the frontal wall. So we can say that the roof or the front superior wall of the orbital region is formed by the frontal bone. And when you will see on the skull, this frontal bone is separating this orbital region from the anterior cranial fossa. Then you can see that the inferior or the floor of the orbital wall it has been formed by the maxilla bone. And when you will see on the skull below the maxilla, there is a maxillary sinus. And this maxilla is separating this orbit from that maxillary sinus. Then when you will see on the lateral side, you can see that there is a bone called the zygomatic bone. This is forming the lateral wall of the orbit bone. Then medially, what is it? You will have another bone that is called as the ethmoid bone, which is going to separate the orbit from another sinus called the ethmoidal sinus. Now let me show you these walls in the figure. Here you can guys see on your Gray's Anatomy book, page 927, this is the orbital region. This is the frontal bone, which you can see here, this brown shade. That is the frontal bone, this this is forming the roof of your orbital wall. Then you can see the zygomatic bone which they have shown you here in this brown shade. That is forming the lateral wall of the orbital wall. Then you can see down here shown in this one that is the purple area. This is the maxilla. This is forming the floor of the eye wall or the orbit wall. Then you have this one that is the green shade bone. That is the ethmoid bone forming the medial wall of the orbit and this is going to separate this orbit region from the ethmoidal sinus. That was about the
All right. Now our next topic is the opening in the orbital region. In our previous topic, we studied about the different walls that make up the orbital region. Now, once we know the walls that are making, how the different structures can enter and leave the eye or the orbit region. There are seven different openings present in this orbital region. We will go one by one discussing each and every of that opening. First, a line in front of this whole orbit region, there is this opening marked here that is called the orbital opening. So present anterior to that of the orbital region is an opening called the orbital opening. Now, here we come to know that this is the superior orbital margin or the roof of the orbital region. In the superior orbital margin, there is an opening that is called as the superior orbital opening or the superior orbital fissure or notch that is present here right and what does it transmit it is going to transmit your supraorbital nerves and your blood vessels that is marked here let's see supraorbital notch and foramen its location is in the superior orbital margin and what is it going to transmit the supraorbital nerves and blood vessels will either enter into the orbital region or will leave the orbital region Number third opening is marked here in the floor of the orbit or in the inferior margin of the orbital region. That opening is called as the infraorbital canal. That infraorbital canal, its location I told you in the floor of the orbital region or in the inferior margin of the orbital region. And what is it going to transmit according to its name? Infraorbital nerve and blood vessel. So from below, either any nerves want to pass or enter into the orbital cavity, blood vessels want to enter or leave the orbital cavity, they will go to this canal that is the infraorbital canal. Located in the medial wall of the orbital region, there is another opening that is called the nasal lacrimal canal. Nasal means related to nose and lacrimal, as I will tell you in the lacrimal apparatus we will study, there is a lacrimal sac, lacrimal gland, everything which is present. So communicating the lacrimal and the nasal in the medial wall, there is an opening called the nasal lacrimal canal and it is going to transmit your nasal lacrimal duct which will contain the fluid from the eye to enter into the nose okay now the fifth opening that is present on the posterior behind that of these two bones called the maxilla and the lesser wing of the cephanoid bone you have an opening this opening is called the inferior orbital fissure and this inferior orbital fissure, its location, you know, present posterior to that of the maxilla and lesser wing of the cephanoid. And what it is going to transmit, it is going to transmit your maxillary nerve and its zygomatic branches. Okay. Then you have number six opening that is called this opening. That is called as the superior orbital fissure. This is present between the greater wing of the cephanoid and the lesser wing of the cephanoid. In between them on the posterior side you have an opening called the superior orbital fissure. And what is it going to transmit? It is going to transmit from your eyes the lacrimal nerve, your frontal nerve from the frontal bones, your trochlear nerves. Right? Now the last that is here. Um, where it is um, this one here on the posterior surface of the lesser wing of the cephanoid you have the optic canal this is present location posterior to that of the lesser wing of the cephanoid and it's going to transmit your optic canal and your optic uh, not optic canal sorry the optic nerve and its different blood vessels and this whole orbital region that is uh, surrounding by a fascia and that fascia is called as the orbital but it is most likely attached to the periosteum that is covering the outer surface of the frontal bone, the zygomatic bone, maxilla bone, cephanoid bones, your ethmoid to them. It is attached but it is covered by a fascia that is called as the orbital fascia. All right. Now we are studying about the lacrimal apparatus you can see in this diagram. The lacrimal apparatus. What is the lacrimal apparatus? It is basically responsible for your production, your passage, and your drainage of fluid from the surface of your eyeball. So from this eyeball, any fluid that is formed, it moves and then it is drained out from the eyeball. This is done by an apparatus called the lacrimal apparatus. Now this lacrimal apparatus consists of number one, your lacrimal gland, 
and a small ducts. These are the ducts, the lacrimal gland with its lacrimal duct. Second here, this is shown here in your lacrimal canacula. You can see this reddish area, this surrounding this reddish area, that is called as the lacrimal canaliculi. Present next to a lacrimal canaliculi, you have this expanded form that is called the lacrimal sac. And below here, you have the nasolacrimal duct. So, what is the function of the lacrimal gland? It will form the fluid, secrete the fluid, and will transport that fluid into the surface of the eyeball by means of these lacrimal ducts. These lacrimal ducts will carry the fluid from the lacrimal gland into the surface of the eyeball. This fluid, there is so much fluid present in this eyeball that all the fluid, they will get together and they will move to the medial surface of the eyeball. On the medial surface of the eyeball, they all are going to go and drain in your lacrimal canaliculi. And they will drain into the lacrimal canaliculi by a passage. That passage is called the lacrimal puncta. From the lacrimal canaculi, they will enter into this upper expanded part called the lacrimal sac. And this lacrimal sac will then convey the fluid from the lacrimal canaculi finally into the nasal lacrimal duct. And the nasal lacrimal duct, it will transport the fluid from the lacrimal sac all the way into your nose. And from the nose, it will be excreted. So that is what is lacrimal upgrades. Okay.